Hi, I'm Sarvika and in this video we are going to learn about how to solder. Well, making a perfect joint is an art. Uh, by joint I mean a soldering joint of course. Any form of art improves by practice. But we can still learn some basic concepts behind it. So in this video today we are going to learn about how to solder. With all simplicity, soldering is a technique to join two metals by means of a metal alloy which is called as solder. The solder is heat melted between the uh, two metals to create a strong physical bond and electrical contact. There can be whole different type of metals which are required to be joined using soldering. So solder uh, can also be of different types. But today we will specifically look into the um, different types of joints which are required generally in the electronic assemblies on uh, either PCB components or joining of two wires. So the equipment used to heat melt the solder is called soldering iron. Today I have three different types of soldering iron here. They have uh, all uh, very similar but not so similar uses. So this first one is a USB powered uh, soldering iron from Multicom. It is 10 watt and then I have this 80 watt direct, directly pluggable into 230 volt mains soldering iron and then this is a soldering station from Multicomp as well. So we will see how these uh, different uh, types of soldering iron are used to create diversified joints on uh, um, PCBs, connectors or between electrical wires. So between these three soldering irons we have uh, different wattages but very similar temperature ranges. So um, power wattage uh, basically determines the speed of heat up of the soldering iron means the higher the wattage the lesser time it will take to reach to the operating temperatures. While making an electrical joint the soldering iron transfers its heat to the metal and the alloy and eventually ends up cooling itself down. So higher wattages help in regaining or maintaining that operating temperature back. Just before we jump into uh, trying out uh, how these soldering irons do their job, we should first uh, have a look at uh, how electrical soldering iron actually works. So this is a 80 watt uh, directly pluggable into 230 volt mains uh, soldering iron. Uh, it has a nice uh, assembly for replacement of uh, the tip. And this is the heating filament which converts actually the electrical energy into the heat. Then uh, for the replacement of the tip we can have uh, um, as much wide tip as we required according to the joint that we are uh, going to make. Uh, usually for the tip we have a copper core inside to transfer maximum heat from the heating element to the working area. The working area is uh, tin plated. And uh, usually above uh, the working area we have a nickel layer to prevent the uh, solder from wicking away uh, the working surface. The outer of uh, the tip is usually a uh, chrome plated iron for its longevity. Now let's assemble it back. It's very easy to use here. I like the soldering iron particularly it is uh, uh, Multicomp MP740055. It is rated 220 to 240 volts and 80 watts at 50 hertz. Uh, this is a very handy and uh, cost effective one and uh, also uh, it has uh, some discrete uh, temperature control here which is usually a forte of uh, uh, soldering stations and we do not usually find them in all the soldering irons uh, of, uh, uh, at this price range uh, on the market. For a solder wire we can have lead or lead free one. The lead free soldering wire is a bit difficult to melt but this should be fine for us. Most importantly before starting to solder it's a common myth that we need to melt the solder with soldering iron and drop it on the wires to create a joint. This does not work. 
Rather, we need to transfer the heat to the metal area which is required to be soldered and then gracefully bring the solder wire in contact so it automatically flows over the surface and creates a strong bond. At this point, if everything happens as shown before, then you are good to go. But there can be a chance that no matter how hard you try to heat the metal surface, the solder doesn't flow throughout. This can be because your metal surface is not cleaned up properly. So for that, there comes the use of the soldering flux. You can rub some amount of the flux over the contact area. This will clean the surface of the oxides and will solve the problem of solder flow by altering the surface tension of the contact. It also prevents further oxidation of the joint. Now we have a soldering station from Multicom which is modeled as MP740261. It has uh, an LCD display and whole range of uh, controls for uh, temperature. And it has also a nice space uh, to keep uh, the wet sponge. And uh, this soldering iron uh, looks a bit similar to the earlier soldering iron. But I think it has... Yeah, this one has a bit smaller diameter. So if you're going to buy the tip, let me check if they have the same tip or not. Um, no, this tip has uh, a smaller diameter. The tip uh, which is for the soldering station has a bit smaller diameter. So if you're going to buy a tip for any of these, make sure you buy the right one. Now let's take a look of common mistakes during soldering that people often make. Number one, set the heating temperature to optimum level. Optimum level is uh, the one just sufficient to melt the solder uh, to join. Do not heat up excessively just for the sake. Higher temperature equivalent to higher risk of oxidation. Second, the soldering tip should be cleaned. Rusted tip will not be able to transfer the heat properly. For cleaning of the tip, we can use uh, either damped sponge or copper wool. You want to use distilled water for damping of the sponge. So everything is perfect. Let's try to solder these wires. We should use thicker uh, solder for thick wires. If you don't have the thick soldering wires, just fold it multiple times to gain thickness as you want. So the solder goes smoothly in the metal contact area and we have a fine joint. Soldering of the SMD components is a tricky job and it all comes to the art which I was talking earlier about. For SMD components fabrication, we usually use stencils, solder paste and hot air oven. But for uh, sufficiently large IC packages or uh, for the maintenance purpose in small boards, or if you're crazy enough, you can go for uh, uh, the manual process of SMD components fabrication. For the SMD components, I'm going to try this uh, USB powered soldering iron. It comes with this stand and has a copper wool here. It has also a display and uh, uh, some uh, buttons for temperature control here. It is powered with 10 watts, so you can uh, check if your uh, phone charger adapter uh, <clears throat> is rated above that and you can use that for powering it as well. Obviously, it has a very uh, thin tip. Let me check how we can replace that one. Okay, so this is the whole replaceable tip and it amazingly gets its power from this aux connector. It's a pretty cute one. I think it would be great for the heat sensitive components. we have reached to the end of the video 
and if you have any questions remained unanswered about these soldering stations or other components from Multicom, you can reach out to me by writing your questions in the comment section directly. Thank you for watching.